Men have read it. What's the hardest thing to explain to women? Story one. It doesn't necessarily make me feel like a creep, but it makes me think the girl doesn't want sex most of the time. However, when a girl does ask for sex or initiates it in her way, it makes it so much more fun for me. It takes out a lot of the anxiety and stress that sometimes surrounds sex in a relationship because it does feel like a two-sided give-and-receive situation. Story two. Sometimes I'm just horny, but in a committed relationship, sometimes I look at you and I'm so in love that I want to be as close and intimate with you as I can, which is sex. My ex and I had different love languages and she would worry that I didn't love her as much as she loved me, which was just crazy because I was head over heels for her at all times. Trying to explain that close, lovey sex was one of the ways I showed her exactly how deeply I was in love with her, but she didn't get it. Story three. When we say we don't care, we don't care. Yes, we can have an opinion on something, but when you say we don't care, that means our idea isn't strong enough to sway us either way on something. Story four. When I say I don't have a preference, my girlfriend tends to take it as me saying I don't like either option, and she'll scrap the plans entirely. I can. Both options sound fine or even, but I don't prefer them. Story five. I made a pact with my wife. I will ask once if everything is fine. If she says yes, I will treat her like everything is fine. If she says no, we can talk about it if she wants. This happened because she screamed at me that I didn't care about her problems. At the time, I asked her if she was okay and she said yes. I said, okay, want to go to the brewery nearby? And nothing was okay. Story six. Sometimes this is me personally, so I can't say it's expected. The struggle not to share emotions isn't as much the worry of backlash from society or friends, etc. It's more just a conflict within ourselves to verbalize and come out with it. I trust my friends to respect how I feel. I just can't get it out because I'm fighting myself. Story 7. That emotional state of, meh, you're not great, you're not terrible, just meh. Nothing is wrong, you're just not feeling it. For some reason, some folks interpret this as pissed off. They then continue to ask, why are you so mad, despite your answering against this? They keep asking until you get annoyed and angry. Story 8. As much as we're seen as sex-crazed pigs, we talk so little about women when we get together for drinks or something like that. And when we do, the topic doesn't last long. Literally can't even remember when was the last time I and my best bud talked about women. We're both single too. Just usually talking about our old friends from school and what they're doing. Cars, our jobs, sport, or politics occasionally. Story 9. My ex would say horrible things when fighting and then wonder why I was not in the mood to fuck her for a few days afterward. But seriously, I have learned to hate teachers that would teach the sticks and stones rhyme because the truth is, sticks and stones can break bones, and harsh words will fucking destroy your self-esteem for years requiring mental counseling, and even then, you might never heal. Story 10. I must constantly explain to my wife why my two-year-old son is obsessed with his penis. I have to explain why he always wants to touch it and grab it when his diaper's off. She will never understand why our baby and his father share this habit. Story 11. I'm a mom and grandmother, and boys are obsessed with ensuring A, that their penis is still there, and B, amazed at how far they can stretch it. C, why does it get hard like that? D, I love my penis. Look at my penis. Best toy ever. So eventually, you have to tell them that it's okay to love your penis, touch it, and admire it. But you cannot play with it so much out in public. Other people think it's weird, but they still do. I guess they eventually learn the guy's trick to penis adjustment. Story 12. It might help if she knew this is normal for some babies. Even girls can get obsessed with touching their vagina, vulva. It's body exploration and it's entirely natural. All they know is that it's part of their body. As they get older, we teach them it's something that they do in private and in their room. But man, do they go after those things. I'm sorry she is having trouble understanding. Story 13. I've had women talk to me about guys losing their hair. He's a guy, so he doesn't care. I know many guys who hate being bald or that they're balding. Their hair is thinning and their hairline is receding. This idea that we don't care or don't care about our looks because we are a guy is ridiculous. Story 14. My wife and I lost a dog in our second year of marriage. He was sick for a month and she cried softly about it daily. It was unfortunate, but I never called. Then, when they took him away at the vet's office, I screamed loudly and uncontrollably for what felt like an hour. Probably realistically like 45 seconds though and just couldn't calm myself down. In the car, she said, you know, if you didn't bottle it up and let it out a little at a time, you wouldn't get like that. She didn't understand at that moment that, for many men, 
We don't have that middle ground of crying. It's either nothing or everything. Many of us never learned how to call in a semi-controlled manner because we never saw a man do that when we were young. I'm 40 years old and I've never seen my father cry at our weddings, not at his parents' funerals, nothing. In other words, I've never had that subconscious model of how a man is supposed to cry and I don't have any practice at it. So when I try to make myself cry, I can't. Whereas my wife can watch any commercial with sick animals, cry quietly for five seconds and then be done with it. Story 15. I work in a highly dynamic field as a male trauma and mental health support. So I'm an avid tear supporter, but I never cry myself. Similarly, cried only once in my young adult life, alone in my office when I got a call from my dad saying they put down my childhood dog. My girlfriend always gets mad that I don't cry at things. But more the reason than not is because I don't ever think I've seen a grown man cry. So how am I supposed to know what it looks like? My dad was cold as ice with all emotions, and I grew up thinking I had to be too. I can only thank my education and job for working with emotions, but I was never taught how to cry like a man. Story 16. I was sensitive when I was a kid and would cry entirely, usually with high school teasing and bullying. As I grew, I cried less and less, and I have gotten to the point where I can get right at the crying point. My eyes are watering and my throat hurts. I can feel the emotion flood my senses, but I can't let it out. I think the last time I did was at my uncle's funeral. It just hit me hard and it all came out. That was 2007. Story 17. Once, after getting a haircut and wearing a lovely new outfit, I was shopping at Target. The five-foot-tall, middle-aged Hispanic checker smiled and said, You look like a model. I blushed and stuttered out a thank you. This was like five years ago. For reference, I do not, nor have I ever looked like a model. Story 18. I remember telling my mom about my first crush in junior high, and she started asking questions about the girl's eye color and hair. I was awkwardly saying, I don't know. And meanwhile, my internal monologue was like, uh, I don't know any of this. Should I know these signs? Am I dumb because I don't know these things? I just thought she was cute and fun to be around. Story 19. I've had a girl falling asleep in a car on a twisty bit of road on a two-hour journey. I was so content just having her sit there, comfortable enough in my company to snooze, driving nice and slow so I didn't wake her, looking over occasionally to make sure she was okay and seeing her being all cute and stuff. That's my input for this thread. Many of us are easily satisfied as long as we're not being messed around. Story 20. I was at home when my wife and her friends got home one day from the pub. They were all giving me funny looks and smirking. I asked what was going on, but they at first refused to tell me. After a bit of a while of prodding, one of them goes, I heard all about your dick, and they all broke out into laughter. I was a little taken by surprise, but laughed and said something like, Oh yeah? Hopefully all good. And they laughed, and that was the end of it. After they left, I asked, What the hell did you tell them? So my wife told her friends about our vigorous romps on our honeymoon in Mexico, apparently in great detail. We were there for a week and probably had sex about three times. We were both pretty sore when we got home. But of course, we had an all-inclusive, so... We got a day drunk on and got pretty physical with each other as you do on a honeymoon. She said, Whatever, you probably tell your friends all about us when it's just the boys. I don't know about you guys, but the extent of what I ever say is usually a raised eyebrow and something like, Ah oh, yeah, boo-hoo. I've never once described my wife's body to a single one of my friends. Nothing in detail about any of my sexual partners from before my wife, and it blew her mind. Story 21. Whenever I talk with other dudes, this is pretty much the extent. There might be the occasional, she has the greatest ass or best blowjob ever, but that's not often and is as far as it gets detail-wise. When I talk with my women friends, I learn things that I would never think to ask in a million years.